So starting us off at number 10 with our first female in the series, we're talking about Nora Jackson. She was only 18 years old when she discovered her mother covered in blood and she was laying on their floor in their Memphis, Tennessee home. Jennifer became the prime suspect. While at this age, most teenagers, you know, they're just finishing up their senior year of high school. They're making plans for what they want to take in college or university. They're making bad decisions in life, but they're no murderers. Well, for Nora, she is battling in court for the death of her mom. She is facing first degree murder after her mother was stabbed 50 times. Jennifer was sentenced to 20 years and 9 months behind bars. It was just last year where Nora won her freedom after being in prison for about 11 years. This is such a crazy story. Nora's father was also murdered in 2004 and that murder also went unsolved and for who killed her mom we still don't know. Alright moving on this list at number 9 we have two best friends Ricky Jackson and Willie Bridgman and they were arrested at the age of 16 years old for a murder that took place in Cleveland, Ohio. Harold Franks was the victim. Well, he was attacked with acid and he was shot twice with a 38 caliber gun. Both teenagers received the death penalty back in 1977, but it was later turned over to life imprisoned. Yes. It was young Vernon's testimony that put Jackson on death row. I could halfway accept my punishment if I was guilty, but Skills. This story takes a huge turn because after spending 40 years behind bars, a judge released them and the judge said they actually have the wrong people. Ricky and Willie were convicted after a false testimony that was given by a 12 year old boy. These two friends didn't commit the crime, so for the past 40 years they were serving time for someone else's crime. Their lives has been taken away from them. Words can't express how I feel right now. I'm just glad to be out, glad to be a free man. What are you going to do? Today? Where are you going to go? Wow. I mean, you know, you sit in prison for so long, you think about this day, but when it actually comes, you don't know what you, you just want to do something, you know? This guy missed out on school, getting his first job, finding a wife, having kids. Being a teenager, you get to experience a lot of things in life, and it is a very important and crucial time in someone's life. Number 8 we have Howard Christensen. He is a Chicago native who became the nation's longest serving prisoner before he finally completed his time. At the age of 17 years old, Howard committed murder and was given a life sentence without parole to 200 years in prison. But that was later overturned to a 64 year prison sentence, which is pretty much uh, life in prison. While well, Howard actually outlived his prison sentence and was able to see the light of day. Well, just for a few years. Howard was 79 years old when he was finally released. Howard was only able to live two years as a free man before he passed away. Moving right along here, we have Bobby Bostick. And he comes onto our list at number seven. Bobby was just 16 years old when he was convicted of committing 17 crimes. Some of them include robbery and kidnapping. He fired a gun at two people. While he has been in prison for more than 20 years now, he is now in his 40s. Bobby on our list has one of the longest prison sentences. He was actually sentenced to 240. 41 years. Many people believe that this was way too harsh for this crime. Murder was not committed, although there was near death. Back in 2010, the Supreme Court decided that their initial decision was unconstitutional and minors should have the opportunity to demonstrate maturity and rehabilitation. Even with that though, Bobby won't be eligible for parole until he's 112 years old. So if somehow he's able to outlive that, he has a chance of being a free man one day. Let's talk about a case I've paid close attention to. I've been very fascinated with it. Well, at number six, let's talk about Brendan Dassey. Probably sounds familiar to you guys. I talk about him a whole lot. Well, he's a nephew of Stephen Avery, the guy from Making a Murder Documentary. It's on Netflix. How you doing, buddy? Good. Brendan. Then they sat down with Brendan. Brendan's lawyers say investigators took advantage of him. Off. Then just 16 years old and with a low IQ, manipulating him into making a false confession. Brandon Dassey was just 16 years old when he was convicted of first degree murder and second degree sexual assault mutilation of a corpse. I believe Brendan Dassey is innocent and was framed. He was sentenced to life in prison with the earliest possibility of parole in 2048. So that's when Brendan Dassey turns 58 years old. Right now he's 28 years old. Stephen Avery, his uncle, is also still in prison and he has served 18 years. 
for a crime he never committed. He was released, but then he was sentenced again for a new crime, and I don't believe he committed that either. I think he was framed by the same people who convicted him wrongly the first time. So in total, Stephen Avery has been in prison for 30 years, and you know what? I can't wait for season two of Making a Murderer to be released on Netflix because I need answers. And actually, at number five, let's talk about Stephen Avery a little bit more. He was also a teenager when he was first in prison. Stephen was 18 years old when he was convicted of sexual assault and attempted murder, and this was back in 1985. Like I said, after 18 years and after DNA testing became more available, it was proven that Stephen Avery was actually the wrong guy and evidence was tampered with by local police. He was serving a 30-year sentence. Back home, relatives waited patiently. After 18 years, the last few hours were the longest until finally the reunion. Long too long time. though, too long. Oh God, I love you baby. Stephen Avery was only free for a few years until he was convicted for a murder. This was back in 2007 and he was given a life imprisonment sentence. They keep on trying to do something with me. They're trying to find ends. They don't believe none of us. You know, whatever we say, they just don't. We're all liars. And next up, number four, we have 65 year old Wilbert Jones, who was just 19 years old when he was sentenced to prison. He served 46 years for a crime that he didn't even commit. His conviction was just recently overturned. Back in 1971, Jones was found guilty of kidnapping and sexually assaulting a nurse in Louisiana. Apparently, authorities withheld evidence that could have exonerated Jones decades ago. I think this man should have been rewarded millions of dollars, although money won't give his life back. The state of Louisiana took away this man's life. I would be super upset in this situation, but for some reason, Jones, he's just thankful for being free. No, I, I forgave. You know what I'm saying? I forgave. I forgive. Because the love of God and the Holy Spirit in my life, I don't have no bit in my life. I got to go the rest of my life. Number three, we have James Robertson, who actually inspired a new documentary on Netflix called I Am A Killer. I'm currently watching it and it's really good. I don't know why I'm so interested in these topics, but they just fascinate me. And I swear, if I wasn't a YouTuber, I'd want to get into criminal psychology or work for Netflix and create these documentaries. James Robertson has had a whole life of crime. He was just 16 years old when he was sent to prison, but his crime started at a much younger age. He grew up with a family that are alcoholics and abusive. Robert is currently in prison for a crime he committed back in 1980 and it was for theft. He has been in prison for the past 37 years. For 20 of those years, James Robertson was left in solitary confinement because he was hard to deal with. So for 23 hours in the day, he's stuck in a very tiny dark room. He doesn't get much visitations, actually I don't think he's allowed them at all, barely no sunlight, and when he does get out of his cell for one hour a day, it's in the, he's in another small cage outside. So James couldn't take this anymore, so he decided to kill his new cellmate, who was a pedophile because he wanted to be placed on death row. I mean, is this real life right now? While on death row, the rules are different. You actually get a bed to sleep on, so more you actually get more food to eat, you get medical care. Also, James didn't want to be in prison while he was older because he said, well, he's just going to become an easy target for people to beat up. So he just wants to, he just wants to leave the world. So crazy because he was just trying to fight for the death penalty, but it took him a long time to actually get it, which is, a, this is a very unusual request. Number two, we have Joseph Ligon, who was just 15 years old when he was convicted of murdering two people back in 1953. Well, it's been 63 years since since he was first sentenced to prison. Currently Joseph is about 80 years old and he has spent most of his life in a Philadelphia prison. He actually made it into the news a few years ago because he was given the chance of parole but he turned it down. Joseph rejected this deal out of principle. He claims that he didn't kill anyone. It's really sad, and you know what? There are thousands of innocent people who are in prison serving time for crimes they didn't commit, and Joseph is probably one of them. Why would he choose to continue to fight for his innocence even when he could be released from prison? So now he is the longest serving juvenile lifer in the world that has been documented. And finally, we have made it to number one. We have Paul Geidel Jr. And he is known to have served the longest prison sentence in the United States. Back in 
1911, Paul was convicted of second degree murder at the age of 17 years old. When Paul was released from prison, he was 86 years old, meaning he was in prison for 68 years. He was locked away in many different New York state prisons. Paul lived to see the day when he was actually released from prison. When Paul was paroled from prison, he didn't want to leave because that was the only life that he knew. He would probably go into shell shock because the world, it just changes so fast. He was in prison from 1911 to 1979. So let me tell you guys quickly what was invented during that time. So just to name a few, we had radio broadcasting, helicopters, microwaves, ovens, credit cards, widescreen cinemas, videotape recorders, video games, man went to space, computers were a new thing, and I mean all of those things, if you lived in prison, you probably never had any access to any of them. I don't even know if you get newspapers or if you read about it, a new computer, well what is that? But if you get released into the new world, it can be very confusing. So starting us off on this list, at number 10 is Susan Maria Mellon, who was a grandmother who has just walked free from prison after 17 years of being locked up behind bars. We're talking about Susan Marie Mellon, who was sent to prison after she was convicted of killing a homeless man. A Los Angeles County judge overturned her conviction, saying that her attorney has actually failed to properly represent her. Susan was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, she is lucky now because this case was actually relooked, it was reopened, and that was because the people linked to the the crime ended up being three gang members and uh, yeah Susan had nothing to do with it they actually found the real people so they're like oh if they are the ones that committed this crime who the heck are you number nine we have Sam Kelly X, who was serving a 50 year prison sentence well after just 19 years he has been released into society Sam was convicted back in 1998 for robbing a Lake Worth pawn shop when he was just 15 years old and since then his life revolved around prison rules and being confined. Well, it was a Paul Beach County judge that suspended the sentence out of nowhere, and Sam was ordered to be released immediately at the age of 34 years old. He wasn't supposed to be released until he was 65. I'm sure for the rest of his life, he's gonna live an honest life and try to stay out of prison, although it wasn't his fault. So like I was saying in the intro, you can never say you will never go to prison, because you can be framed, you can be convicted for a crime you never committed. Okay, moving into number 8, we have Adam Gray, who's served 20 years for a crime he didn't commit. Adam was sentenced to life when he was just 14 years old, and this is when he was convicted of setting a fire that killed two people back in 1993. He actually confessed after seven hours of police interrogating him without his parents or attorney present. He said he couldn't take it anymore, and he just told the detective whatever the heck they wanted to hear. This is why interrogating could be actually, it could be a negative thing. We all know what happened with the Brandon Dassey case, right? You know the Netflix show Making a Murderer? Come on, Brandon, be honest. You can do it. Just tell us the truth. I grabbed her arm, put it on the side, and tied her up. Are we looking? All right, number seven, we have DeMarlo Antoine. Well, he was just freed from prison after 23 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit. DeMarlo was 19 years old when he was arrested and he was charged for a murder. Well, now that he's released, unfortunately, because the crime he committed was in Nevada and he was uh, arrested in Nevada, he actually isn't entitled to any compensation funds for being wrongly convicted. So it just sucks he was wrongly convicted in the wrong state. Nevada is actually one of 18 states in the nation that doesn't provide anything for people who were imprisoned falsely. 4% of Nevada's inmates have been wrongly convicted, which is around 500 people. All right, moving into number six, let me take you guys over to Pennsylvania, where 43-year-old Sharon Thomas has just recently walked out of the county correctional facility as a free man. After serving 24 years behind bars, a judge has thrown out his conviction for the 1990 murder of a businessman in North Philadelphia. This was because recently there has been some new evidence that proved Sharon was actually the wrong person. Thomas told the media when he was released, and I quote, I felt the justice system was going to prevail sooner or later and that somebody would hear my cries. Sharon has been locked away since he was 16 years old. When he was 19, he was sentenced to life in prison. Well, luckily now he is out. And let's just hope he wasn't in prison in one of those states that don't pay you money for being wrongly convicted. Because he should be entitled to millions of dollars. Number 5, let's talk about Anthony Sanborn Jr. He was found guilty of murder when he was just 16 years old for murdering 16 year old Jessica L. Briggs. Anthony was tried as an adult and was convicted back in 1992 after a 9 day trial. He was sentenced to 70 years in prison. Anthony claims that he's never killed anyone and he's actually maintained his innocence. 
25 years after the murder, a key witness actually took back their testimony, which came as a shock to the courtroom. The witness said they actually didn't witness this killing. The judge who was presented with the lack of evidence to prove this was the right person who committed the crime dropped all charges and Anthony was set as a free man. So we still actually don't know who the killer is, but all we know is this guy, this wrong guy has served 25 years behind bars for no reason. At number 4 we have Andrew Wilson who served 32 years behind bars. Andrew was convicted of stabbing to death 21 year old man who was sleeping in his truck with his girlfriend back in 1984. When Andrew was arrested he claimed he didn't kill anyone and they had the wrong person. According to Andrew's attorneys, key pieces of evidence were never turned over to the defense during the trial. It took 25 years for a new superior judge to claim that by withholding evidence Andrew was deprived of his constitutional rights to a fair trial and because of that the judge ordered his release immediately from prison so Andrew was able to be released from prison to take care of his 96 year old mom. He got out just in time. Number 3 we have Eddie Collins who is behind bars for 44 years. After spending 4 decades behind bars for the murder he was finally a free man. He was released from the Arizona State Prison in Florence. Back in 1973 Eddie and his brother were involved in a drug deal in Tuscan. His brother fatally shot Terry Young. Eddie's brother took a plea deal and he only served 10 years. Ok hold on a second. Is this real life right now so you're telling me that the killer took a plea deal and he's getting 10 years and the brother who just happened to be with him is in life in prison? So his brother served 44 years behind bars. The justice system it just doesn't make sense here. Alright number 2 let's talk about John Sam Hall who served 50 years in prison after a mugging went tragically wrong in an alleyway in Detroit. When he was 17 years old John was sentenced to life without parole. But like we've just learned about the new law where minors they're not allowed to be sentenced to life without parole. This is when a judge released him back into society. It's been half a century since this guy has lived in a normal world. So much has changed and now around 70 years old it's going to be very difficult for him to understand things. It's like being dropped off in a foreign country and they don't even speak your language. It could be very very frustrating. Finally number 1 we have Jack McCullough who has also served 50 years behind bars. But unlike John at number 2 Jack served all of his time as an innocent person. Jack is from Washington state and the law failed him. He was convicted in the abduction and killing of a 7 year old Illinois schoolgirl back in 1957. This girl's disappearance made headlines nationwide. There was a lot of unsolved answers during this trial and just when the family thought that they had some closure finding out who the killer was, the killer behind bars, the case was reopened and it was proven that Jack wasn't the killer and the killer, the killer is still out there. So saying that though the family is still convinced that Jack is still guilty and he's actually the killer. Maybe they're in denial. Do in at number 10 we have George Parrott who was just 17 years old when he was arrested and soon after he was convicted of rape and an assault that took place back in 1987. Well George has spent 30 years in prison after it was deemed that he was actually wrongly convicted due to bogus FBI evidence. He was convicted mainly on an FBI agent's testimony about a microscopic hair found in connection with the rape. But a judge found that evidence to be flawed and released Parade on personal recognizance Wednesday. This is why the justice system is just so messed up. A lot of times police officers or FBI agents are convinced, they're so convinced that this is the guy, this is the guy that committed the crime. So what they do is they do anything they can to get a conviction, to put this guy behind prison and to do it fast. Well we have witnessed in the past them given false statements, tampering with evidence and a lot of times we have witnessed FBI agents and police officers get it wrong. They convicted the wrong person. Did you ever lose hope after all those years? No, oh, absolutely. Of course I've been in 30 years. A crime I didn't commit. Of course I lost hope. For people who may not have hope, what do you want them to know? Instead of pull out. I Don't think. give up. Don't give up, that's for sure, don't give up. Next up, number 9, we have Edward Mitchell, who was just served 20 years behind bars. Back in 1996, he was convicted of robbery. Edward was actually the right guy for the crime that happened back in 1996, so he's not innocent on our list. He robbed a 65 year old man's jewelry store. Edwin was able to grab a diamond ring worth about $16,999. Of course, he was caught and he was sentenced away to 20 years. So Edward just simply outlived his sentence and he was released back into society. Well, usually people 
people who have served that much time, they know the bad atmosphere of like, they know what prison's like, it's bad, they don't wanna go there. So you get released, you, you become like a good boy, right? Well, for him, no, not what happened. Edward, he didn't learn his lesson. He actually robbed another jewelry store. This time he took a nine millimeter pistol into a pawn shop and he stole a bracelet, a wallet, a cell phone from an employee's lounge. Well, we don't know what his sentence is because he's actually still on the run. He's currently out there being crazy. So that's all the information at the time of this recording. He could be captured by now, but right now there is a warrant out for his arrest. At number 8, we have another man who has served 20 years behind bars. This right here is Juan Rivera. He has been in jail for a couple decades. While in prison, Juan has claimed his innocence. Well, after 20 years, he has been cleared by DNA as being the wrong person convicted for this crime. Juan said no amount of money could ever sum up to 20 years in prison, but he did win $20 million in a settlement. I mean, that is a lot of money, but 20 years of your life is gone. That's, that's a long time. Anyone would go insane. Moving into number 7, we have a Willie. William Barnhouse. Back in April 21st of 1992, a 22-year-old woman was raped behind a vacant building, and this took place in Muncie, Indiana. Well, this woman described to her best ability in the situation that she was in, you know, what the man looked like, the man who raped her to police officers. Well, that's when police officers set out, and they found the man to this description. Officers took him back to the crime scene, where they flashed a flashlight onto his face, and uh, the woman identified him as the right guy. Well, in court, no one believed this man to be innocent, so the defense team then presented evidence to prove that William did suffer from mental illness his whole life. They probably did that so William can take a lesser sentence, you know, a lesser punishment because he was pleading insanity, he wasn't in the right state of mind. Well, they actually found him guilty, and they found him in the right state of mind for the crime. They deemed him as being capable of committing the crime, and uh, he was sentenced away to 80 years in prison. Well, just this year, the Innocence Project and the Wrongfully Conviction Clinic at Indiana Indiana University stepped in and performed their own DNA testings and it concluded that they actually have the wrong guy. When this was proven, Williams was immediately released. This is just a sad, sad story. Number six is Timothy Bridges and he served 25 years behind bars. That is a lifetime. He was sentenced away for rape and a burglary. Timothy was linked to this crime when two pieces of his hair was found at the scene back in 1991. Well, recently this case was reopened up. Well, it was discovered that there was evidence that police failed to turn over to the district of attorney's office before his trial. It was also discovered that police wanted this man to be convicted to this crime because they actually made threats to people who made testimonies at the trial. So this guy went to jail because of what people said and not because of hard evidence. When the evidence was finally tested, Timothy actually wasn't even the right person. Apparently this has become a problem of police interfering with investigations. There has been some cases where police believe they have the right suspect and they don't want the suspect to go free, so they make sure that this person is gonna get locked up. Whether the evidence is planted or, you know, lack of evidence is given to the right people, they're gonna make sure who they believe committed the crime is going away for sure. Number five, we have Anthony Sanborn, and he has served 27 years behind bars for the murder of his childhood girlfriend. His girlfriend was identified as 16 year old Jessica Briggs, and he was sentenced to 70 years behind bars, but just recently it was proven that a key witness actually didn't even see the crime. So Anthony was released immediately. Imagine serving 27 years behind bars after someone had just killed your girlfriend and the whole world believes that you did it. I couldn't imagine Anthony's mindset. This murder was back in 1989 and the key witness testified. And the key witness was also the sole witness of the crime, but apparently the witness was threatened by police to tell the courts exactly what the police officer wanted them to say. But it was proven that the witness couldn't have actually seen this crime. Why? Well, they were actually legally blind. I mean, is this real life right now? What a fail. It just sucks it took 27 years to figure this one out. This one just like really upsets me. Next up, number four, let's talk about Christopher Abernathy. Christopher has served 28 years behind bars in a park forest. Christopher was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But instead of walking out with the cane at an old age, Christopher was able to hold his head up high and step after step, he was able to leave the prison where he maintained his innocence for 28 years. I am not even 28 years old. Imagine just my whole life just 
locked up away, like living the prison life. I bet after time, he probably thought, you know what, like maybe I did do this crime. Like why else am I locked up here for almost three decades? I mean, he probably went insane. Number three, we have Randolph Arledge, who hasn't been living in society for the past 29 years. Back in 1981, 21-year-old Carolyn Armstrong was found on a dirt road. She was naked from the waist down with 40 stab wounds to the neck and chest. This trial went to court and Randolph was the main suspect and despite the lack of evidence connecting this man to the crime, he was convicted of murder and he was sentenced to 99 years in prison. 2001, the Innocence Project stepped in, reopened the case. They were able to secure DNA testings of the physical evidence with the cooperation of the county district attorney's office. The testings concluded that the evidence found at the crime scene, which was some hair samples, wasn't actually Randolph's. It ended up being the victim's hair and hair nets. There was a new suspect, David Sims, and when he was confronted, he admitted he was the last one that saw her alive. That was his hair net at the scene, and uh, you know what? It was probably him then. I mean, everything is adding up here. So this is when Randolph was exonerated by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. At number two, we have David McCollum, and he was convicted of murder when he was just 16 years old. He has served 29 years behind bars, while he has just been freed after a judge overturned his conviction, saying it was actually based on a false confession. The decision to free David was made at the recommendation of Brooklyn District Attorney Ken Thompson, who actually has helped turn over 10 convictions so far in less than a year of taking office. This is insane, just think about that for a second. Less than a year, he's overturned 10 convictions. Like people, like 10 people were wrongly in prison. I mean, what is going on in Brooklyn? Why are innocent people being locked up for decades for no reason? Why aren't people doing their jobs to find the right convicts who are still on the streets? Finally, number one, we have an insane story about Joseph Sledge. Joseph was convicted of killing a mother, and this is back in 1976. This took place in Whiteville, North Carolina. Joseph has spent 40 years behind bars as an innocent person. Now at the age of 70 years old, he is now a free man. A judge claims that the system has actually made a mistake. DNA experts confirm that none of the evidence collected in the case, which was hair, there was DNA, fingerprints, well, it didn't belong to him. It was a district attorney who was not not originally involved in the case who actually reopened the investigation. This is when they found the many, many, many mistakes in the case. When you're convicting someone of such harsh crimes and sentencing them away for like life for a very long time, you it should be a slam dunk. With confidence, the legal system should know 100% that they have the right person. Mm -hmm.